In this video, we'll take a look at the drawing setup process for electrical files in our project. So continuing from the previous video where the file was registered, we get this drawing setup dialog box. Don't forget that if you happen to cancel out of that dialog box, you can always come back to it by going to the file tab and the ribbon interface coming to settings and the settings for building and here is settings for the electrical setup and this first one will get us back to that drawing setup dialog box. You notice there's three tabs in here, my symbols, building structure and 3D. So we'll look at each of those tabs and what we set up in here. The current project symbol library will be selected. In my case, I have the ANSI Y 32.9-1972 symbol library. Then we notice we have three options here for scale factor, standard text size, and subtype text size. So the scale factor, I'll leave at one. The scale factor is for symbols that are not drawn in the real world measurements, like symbols for receptacles, switches, etc. The delivered library, the library that I'm using, was created for one eighth inch scale drawing drawings. So I keep this at one, knowing that my construction documents plans are gonna be at one eighth equals one foot. So the scale factor will adjust the size of the symbols relative to this scale. The standard text size, I'll change here to be one foot. That's for some miscellaneous text in the electrical discipline. The subtype text size controls the initial size of the labels for circuit numbers and subtypes. And so we'll set that to an eighth of an inch for my eighth inch equals a foot plots. And that setting will respect the annotation scale that's set in the model. And you just wanna make sure your annotation scale lock is turned on and you'll see that in subsequent videos and then in this bottom section we see we have these options for rotate symbols at an insertion which i've got checked on this will allow me to rotate the symbol during the placement operation for any orientation and then the cycle symbol dialog means once i place a symbol it will bring back the dialog box for placing those symbols whichever tool i happen to be in there the next tab is the building structure tab. Now, in every project for electrical discipline, at the very beginning of the project, and it's a one-time operation, you set up the building structure. So are you organizing your building by the building, the floor and the spaces? Maybe you're organizing it just by floors and spaces, or maybe you have zones in your building. So. We're doing this, again, as a one-time operation here. And so for this project, I'll choose building, floor, and space. And then to get it set up, notice that we have this icon right down here that's the building manager. You can see the tooltip that pops, pops up there. So if I choose that building manager, then I come to the building manager classification system dialog box here and we can see where I've got it's showing me that I have building floor and space selected here so again this is the first time I've done it for this project so I'll come down to the lower left hand corner down here where I've got these tools and select the new tool here then that will open this create keys dialog box the keys are designations for the electrical database out there so as far as placing symbols and doing our modeling, I am not too concerned about the keys. That's just an identification in the electrical database out there. So you'll see in some of these dialog boxes like this one here, create keys, that's what it's referring to. So we're, we're creating these keys in the database from this dialog box. So 
I'll come down to the description field here and I'll this will be building one and then I'll leave the key number and number of keys and step size all at one here and select OK. So now I see where I've defined my building one and then the database key I can see here is the 2.1. So, so back here in the building manager we notice now that it says key floor one. So I'll come down here and click new. And now I see that I have floor highlighted here. So now I'm setting up the floors for the building. Again, I'll leave the key number, number of keys, and step size all at one. Come down to my description field, and I'll call this floor lobby floor. And I'll click OK. So we again, we see up here in the building manager how that is now being organized here as we create these we created our building we created our floor so back down here at the tools I'll add floors now so if I come to add again we see how floor is highlighted we see the key number is now two and then we'll add a description here this one I'll call office floor one and click OK and add another one office floor 2 and click OK so now I've got my floor set up for this project and and we'll click OK here in this dialog box so now I see back in my drawing setup that under building floor space, I have my building one, my lobby floor, my office floor one, and my office floor two. Then we'll switch over to the 3D tab here. And we see in the 3D tab, we have the ceiling height. So this is a general setting here for the floor. We can always set our, our electrical symbols at heights as we place them or we can simply use the ceiling height that we're de defining here. So it's just a general height for the, the floor. Some rooms might have a different ceiling height. And again, that can be done as we place the symbols. So I'll leave that at 10 feet. The floor level, I'll leave it zero. The tools will recognize that elevation for the floor and place the symbols relative to that elevation. The base angle will just leave at zero here. And then we have these options for 2D, 3D. You could work in a strictly 2D mode where you just see the 2D symbols as you model your electrical symbols, or you could work in a purely 3D mode where you would just see the 3D symbols. It's recommended that you use the 2D, 3D mode. You'll see the 3D representation of the electrical components and the 2D representation of the electrical components. And we have collision detection. We've got display clearance one and display clearance two. Now I'm going to toggle both those on. This allows us to create clearance areas around components, for example, panels in our projects. So this helps when we go to run clash detection jobs, uh, coordinating with not only our own discipline, our own electrical discipline, but with the other disciplines and we can help to avoid uh, clashes using these clearances in the models. So I've got all the settings set up and this drawing setup dialog box. Just to make sure I'll go back to the building structure. And you always want to have a floor selected to associate the model with the floor. Now I'm in the discipline master. It still needs to be associated with the floor. So I'll choose lobby floor and say OK right there. And we'll see as we create more files in the next videos, how we'll do that for each of those files. The next video is importing architectural room spaces. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.